Hello guys, Carver Farmers back again. Today we're going to be doing a video on making this here feed barrier for the farm. So this will go in the cattle shed so the cattle can feed off uh, silage we put in. But this will be made just using the 3D printer. But if you don't like me making 3D printing videos, because a lot of you probably won't have 3D printer, I'm not sure any if anybody will, uh, please leave a comment down below and I'll not make any more. But you can see that the height of this feed barrier is 1390 millimeters, and the frame is made out of 60 by 40 by 2.5 mil box section. It doesn't actually give you the length, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to be making my own lengths. So I need two 125 mil ones, one 137 mil, and two 165 mil. So to fit around the cattle shed I made. But obviously, this is in. Um, real life it's in one to one scale so I need to get that down to 132 so I just need to do uh, 1390 divided by 32 and that gets me 43.4375 mil so I'm gonna round down to 43 mil so if I go over to fusion here and create a new component and just call it a uh, feeder just for short and uh, then create a sketch on this plane and as I said one of them is going to be well the height's going to be 43 and one of them is going to be 125 so that's the outer dimensions uh, I'm just going to offset this by 2 and that gets us the outer box section frame the easiest way I think and then, oh I didn't mean to finish that, and then you're going to need to put in this here beam, this is where wood goes in here so that the silage can go up against it, but that layer, I'm not sure the height, because it doesn't give you dimensions of that height, I'm going to guess that's about a third of the way up there, so I need to find a third of 43, and to do that I'll just do um, 43 times 0.33, and that's 14.19 mil. So round up to 14 and I'll just create a sketch across here or create a line sorry and then smart dimension that line from there to there as being 14 and make another one from there to there and then the distance between them two is going to be 2 because well, that's the width of the box section we're using then we need to make the bars that the cattle head, cattle's head goes between. Um, I'm going to just estimate that's at um, about 70 degrees there. So if I just create a line from this corner up to there and change the 65 to 70 and join it up to that line, that'll get the first line. And then if I just do this, just any shape doesn't matter if I make this one parallel to this one obviously the parallel and just change the dimension to 2 actually I'm going to use this as 1 because it's not really a like a frame of it then I should be able to go in and create a rectangular pattern of oh needs to load this line and this line well first of all let me cancel that pattern and I just need to put in a line across there line across there so now I should be able to go in rectangular pattern and select objects this one this one this one and this one and then the direction is that line and the quantity I'm going to put 9 in and if I just drag this out it puts in more lines so let me just go to the end there and press OK because you can see we've got all our bars in now all we have to do is finish the sketch press pull and select all the individual bits and pieces in it um, 
there we go, and bring it out too. Press enter, and then that's the basic feeder bar feed barrier. Obviously, there'll be a bit of wood or something in here, or a little bit of cardboard. I'm not sure yet, but we'll work something out whenever we get it printed. So that's one of them. Now I'll design the other two just without recording because you've seen how I'm gonna um make them, and then I'll show you how I slice them and print them. Uh, after so yeah. So um, I spent another five or ten minutes there making the other two feeder barriers, and now we've got the one two five one. If I turn them off, we've got this one which is. 125 mil long. We've got this one which is 137 mil long, and we've got this one which is 165 millimeters long. So now all we have to do is print off two of these, uh, one of these, and two of these, and that's all I need for this farm. So I'll get these saved and exported, and I'll open them in Cura, which is this year. Which I slice them in, which I'll explain more in a minute. Okay, so I've now opened Cura and now I'll, I'll just import the three feeders into it. Now, if I go into 3D models, feed barriers, there's the three of them. And there they all are now in this. So I need to rearrange them and try and get another two onto this. I'm not sure whether it will or not because this is the size of my printer. So if I select this one, I'm just gonna you can then move it about move that right into the corner. And then I'll select this one actually. No. This one I'm gonna try rotating this one here around ninety degrees. And then putting it up into that corner. Think should work, and then we'll move this one down. Now I'll multiply this one by another one, so I can get an extra one in here. Now if I select this one, and then move it to by in line there, and then select this one, move it up, and then put an extra one of them in. And there it is. So that's all the feed barriers we need. Just put this one here, over here. That's all the marines on the build plate. Now this is where the settings are in here. So the layer height, that's the distance that the nozzle moves up every time it goes around a layer. So I'm going to actually leave that at 0 0.2. And then initial layer height, that doesn't matter, that stays the same. And line width, that's how much a width of the line comes out for every pass it does. So I'm going to change that down to 0 0.5. Because that divides into 2 millimeters, which is the size of our... Uh, bars on our feeders so that'll work well. So that's basically um settings done. I know there's a lot more there but they're sort of not needed that much. So and into infill this is another one. So I'm gonna make this solid so one hundred percent infill. And that's infill done. Material I'll just check the temperatures are right. Okay, they're not, so that should be 115, or 215, sorry. And the speed should be about 40 to 60 millimeters per second. So I'll check, okay, we're in 40, so I'll leave it at 40. Travel, doesn't matter, cooling, doesn't matter, support, we don't need support for this. No, I think it's in experimental, this one is. But I haven't used this setting much, I'm just sort of trying it out. But I think it's down here, maybe not. Okay, I'll just search for it. It's called ironing. If I enable that. 
that's basically what ironing does is it finishes the model and then it goes around and rubs the top surface with a hot nozzle which takes out the lines on the top so as I said we'll not need support and that's us basically ready to slice so if I press slice it'll take a minute or two just to work out what it has to do and then it'll give us a preview of what the printer's going to do two hours, two and a half hours so I'm actually going to change the speed um, I can exit out of that wait did I, I think I turned ironing off there I didn't mean to ok, oh I didn't, that's fine Right, and then I'll go back to speed, change that up to 60 I think, change this to 60, and then slice again, and I'll just do the same thing again, only it'll work it out at a different speed, which will make it quicker. Okay, there we go, one hour 52 minutes, that's taken uh, almost uh, 40 minutes off. So we'll look at the preview, this is what the printer is going to do exactly. So it's only got 9 layers because it's a really thin model, but it has a lot more uh, lines to do. So this isn't very interesting because it's just the same thing up and down, but that's the first layer and that's the top layer. So now I'll just save this and to the same file that I got the objects out of, so feed barriers. And then I'll just put in the name feed barriers and save it. Now I'll open the thing on Octoprint on the internet which I use to run my 3D printer. Okay so I've loaded up Octoprint and I'll just connect to the printer here. And just take some in, there it is, operational. So now I can upload the file that I just made there which is in feed barriers and just feed barriers and then upload it. Now if I uh, load this it'll put it up here and that's what's going to be printed so if I just um, turn on the temperature or turn on the set the temperatures to 215 and 60 then I'll wait for it to heat up and then I'll be able to press print and I'll start printing. Uh, this is like the online uh, this is how you get your printer online. You use this here called Octoprint, and you get the you just basically connect it up and type in like a password and stuff, and then this screen comes up, and then you're able to control like control your printer. Like if I press this, you can hear you'll probably hear it moving if I do it. I'm not sure if you can hear that. You probably can. That's me just homing the Z axis, and I'll home the Y axis after. Okay, so that's both axes homed. Um, the temperature is at 155 and 49. So I'm going to switch over and start recording on my phone now. Okay, so I'm over on the phone now and it's heated up to 186 and 59. So it's not too far away now. Um, quickly, I'll just show you the printer. So, as you can see, I've got the glass down, but there's no masking tape on it like I had the last time. And you can print on masking tape straight away, or you can print on glass and use print stick or something or I use this here it's hairspray I just spray a bit over it before the print starts and it sticks down well so I'm just gonna press print over here now and I'm gonna just spray some hairspray all over the bed just because it's a big print it'll cover the whole bed and I'll come down I'll just pull the bits off and this is a prime line where it primes the extruder and nozzle to make sure there's filament coming out and then I'll start the actual print so I'm just going to film the first layer or the first bit of the layer and then I'll come back when it's done so it started doing the first barrier I just make it's like path up from when I sliced it on the computer but as you can 
see it's working well. It's sticking down. So I'll leave it to print now. Come back when it's finished. Guys, it's done the first layer and it's just onto the second layer now. You can see all the five different feeder barriers there. Um, it's just continuing on. So yeah, it's just an update of how we're getting on. Okay guys, so the print's just coming on to the last bit now. I think it should be finished just about now. I know it's got, got this line to do. But that took about just over two hours instead of one hour and 52 minutes. Yeah, and there it's done now. So I'll bring it out and get them off and I'll take them up and sh uh, show you them in position. So guys, I brought it upstairs and added a bit of cardboard in at the bottom and painted it silver so it looks like it's galvanised and there it is finished. So obviously that's not the right one for that gap. This one here will be done and then go into there. But that one there is for along the side of it. But I think it looks pretty real. There's nothing else really you could do to make it more real. You could do the one that goes down and then at an angle and straight again. You could do that one but I thought that one was fine because it's simpler. But while I'm up here I'm going to show you the farms. Because I've got the two sheds in now. I made them both and I've got the shed in with the roof comes off all of them so you can get in I'll be able to show you inside them when the time comes. And I've also got the this laneway done with the grass on each side and the grass up the middle and the road. So I stopped making videos in this because it was taking too long with videos. So I'm just going to make it now and you'll see it with like updates like this. But so far it's looking pretty good. So that's how I made these feeder barriers using a 3D printer. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in another video. Please like and subscribe. Bye.